everyone, I'm John Fenzel, and we're here in a spot on the Gettysburg battlefield known as Barlow's Knoll. There are many incredible stories that came out of the Battle of Gettysburg, and one of them is the story of Union General Francis Barlow and Confederate General John B. Gordon. On July 1st, 1863, at around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Brigadier General John B. Gordon's Georgians attacked General Francis Barlow's 1st Division, which was located right here on this small knoll north and slightly east of town. This knoll or small hill at the right flank of the Union line was later known as Barlow's Knoll. Gordon's assault was a success, and as the men of the 1st Division were retreating, one soldier's courage and devotion caught Gordon's eye. This soldier was General Francis Barlow, who was trying to rally his troops to get them to stop retreating and make one final honorable stand. Suddenly, a mini ball struck him through the trunk, paralyzing his arms and legs as it passed near his spine. John Gordon found the officer who was lying pale on the ground, and Gordon was struck with pity for the officer. He dismounted his horse and gave him water from the canteen. They exchanged names. Both soldiers thought Barlow was about to die. Gordon and several soldiers carried Barlow to the rear. His last request was for Gordon to carry a message to his wife. He wanted to make sure that Mrs. Barlow knew that his last thoughts were of her, and he wanted her to know the name of the kind soldier who helped him as he lay dying. Gordon promised to take the message to her. He found Mrs. Barlow with the Union Army and delivered the message under flag of truce. Convinced that Barlow was dead, Gordon thought no more of the incident. After all, thousands had died at Gettysburg. What he didn't know was that the mini ball did not kill Barlow. He survived. Next summer, Francis Barlow saw a newspaper article that said General J.B. Gordon of North Carolina had died. Barlow thought that this was the same general who had helped him at Gettysburg. But what he didn't know was that that J.B. Gordon was his friend's relative, not the man who had helped him. For 15 years, each general thought the other one was dead. John B. Gordon went on to become a United States Senator. One day, U.S. Representative Clarkson Potter of New York invited Gordon to dinner with someone named Francis Barlow. Potter didn't know anything about what had happened at Gettysburg, and Gordon thought that this was a different General Barlow, and Francis Barlow thought this must be another General Gordon. Suddenly, the two men found themselves seated across from each other at dinner, and Gordon said to him, General, are you related to the Barlow who was killed at Gettysburg? Barlow answered, Why, I am the man. Are you related to the Gordon who killed me? Gordon replied, I am the man, sir. Both men were stunned. They went on to be good friends until Barlow died in 1896. Now, whether things actually happened the way they describe is up for debate. They both used the story during many joint speaking engagements throughout the country in the years that followed. Now, no matter what happened though, it's a great story. There's a very poignant, even legendary story of Lieutenant Bayard Wilkinson, and it's one of the most famous to come out of the Battle of Gettysburg. Bayard Wilkinson was a 19-year-old soldier. His grandfather was the founder of the city of Buffalo, New York, and his father, Sam, was a war correspondent who had been a Washington bureau chief for Horace Greeley's New York Tribune and was now reporting at Gettysburg for the New York Times. Bayard turned 19 years old on July 1st, 1863, and he was in command of Battery G, 4th U.S. Artillery. He took his Napoleon guns 12 miles on Emmitsburg Road to reach Gettysburg that morning. Passing directly through the village, he reported to Barlow, who dispatched him here to this knoll, which was too close to the Confederate positions. Seated in the saddle of his horse, reaching the Knoll summit, Wilkerson directed his men to maintain a steady and effective fire. His battery quickly drew the attention, though, of the Confederate artillery battalions, and a dozen cannons pointed directly at his position right here and kept up this devastating, converging fire. He was a conspicuous target on his white horse, and an enemy shell went through Wilkerson's horse and mangled his right leg below the knee. With just unimaginable courage, he took a small knife from his pocket and cut through the remaining pieces of flesh that kept his leg attached to his body. He then ordered four of his men to carry him to a nearby house and then sent him to return back to the battle. 
11th Corps Artillery Chief Major Thomas W. Osborne met Bayard being carried to the rear. One leg had been cut off the knee by a cannon shot, he recalled. I knew at a glance that the wound was fatal. Wilkeson lay in the cellar of what became a makeshift hospital with wounded from both sides but with little medical staff. Two nurses told his father that Bayard was in great pain and died due to loss of blood, adding that he was a gentleman throughout his ordeal. Sam Wilkerson was unaware that his son had been wounded until the following day.